ولا ب ب ب شوف يا القالي شوف شنو يا القالي on the house with shredded diesel يا القالي يا الحبيب اليوم حلقتنا all the way from Canada يا بين لكم تكنولوجي جديد شيء تقدر تحلل فيه جيناتك بالتفصيل تكنولوجي متطور غير عن تحليل الدم فتنس دي ان اي باور ضيفتنا من كندا دكتور لويس دكتور هاو ار يو اي ام جريت عبد العزيز هاو ار يو I'm pretty well. I'm pretty well. I'm very excited to this um, episode that we're doing today. Um, and it seems like it's going to be a lit episode. Doctor, first, before we start to speak about the DNA power and the genetics and get deeper in our episode, I'd like to know more about you, Dr. Lewis. Well, I'm, I'm delighted too. So uh, I've been, uh, I got into DNA uh, through actually poor health. I ended up, I was a corporate executive and uh, uh, traveling globally, doing a lot of fabulous things, but like many people, wasn't spending enough time on looking after myself, ended up with many things going wrong, seeing lots of specialists, troubles with breath, um, trouble sleeping uh, and I ended up being hospitalized uh, with for, for lack of iron and being anemic and uh, ended up doing this DNA test and having no specialists being able to help me with what was wrong and getting the results back and seeing uh, that I have actually a genetic variation related to vitamin Bs. And I thought, I wonder if that could be part of my problem. And So I ended up with four years of doctors, no help, people, you know, being prescribed drugs, ended up starting to take just straight vitamin Bs, because that's where my genetics are weak. And within two weeks, I was back to myself. I was dealing with chronic fatigue, just so many issues, and, uh, and uh, DNA solved my problems. And interestingly, I got into DNA because I adopted identical twins 20-some years ago, And I was so curious how they could be so different. And so I was really studying DNA for quite a long time. Uh, and we've been through this massive curve of what DNA can do and how we can now use that data that is, you know, in all of us to be able to help us be healthier. And um, with that, through that journey, did you um, come across, um, let's say, the depression wave also? In terms of people's health for depression, yes. I mean, completely there's, so we have so many things, Abdulaziz, that are affecting our bodies that is different than maybe 50 or 70 years ago. So our bodies are being impacted by uh, chemicals, poor food quality, stress, different sleep, technology, lots of things are being uh, coming onto us that's affecting our ability to be healthy. And so we have to pay more attention to our health than we ever have before. And depression is absolutely one of those things that we are seeing in people because their bodies are out of balance. Our bodies want to be healthy and they're trying to be healthy, but we've got to work with them in order to keep that homeostasis so that they can be performing at their best. And um, this technology of DNA power, how did you come across it? Uh, so it was, this it was really new when I first started getting into it. So there was actually a Canadian company doing initial research into how can you take the DNA that really the, the, the uh, Human Genome Project um, ran over a number of years, finished in about 2003, cost, you know, $3 billion. And over the last 20 years, that technology and the ability has to really get into a more cost effective and understand our human genome has advanced on a like a super steep curve. So we now have the ability to get our DNA information for ourselves on critical things that we know actually which ones really deal with health or diet or exercise uh, for now just a few hundred dollars. So like it's a it's there's been a dramatic change in 
the cost, the availability, the reliability, and really there's just this phenomenal wealth of data and research that's available to us. It used to cost, um, it used to be very expensive back then to test your DNAs. I mean, I'm not sure, but like, it was, it was, it was, it was uh, how much did it cost back then to do a, um, a DNA test compared well, to- Well, when I first- when I did mine uh, 10 years ago, I paid 2500 to do mine. And I only got a very few genes at that time, which really helped me, again, solve my problems. But now, you know, we're testing, we have, we've isolated all the critical genes um, that are important for day-to-day -day health around diet and exercise in particular. And we're doing that for just a few hundred dollars. And that includes consultations and recommendations and everything. So it's a dramatic change. And it's now, you know, really the foundational step people should take for their health. It's the first piece of information you should have when you're trying to think about how to be healthier, how to biohack, how to work, you know, exercise better and how to eat right for your body. That's the place to, to look is start there. And then you can go into other ways to see if you, you know, deal with health issues, et cetera. But really DNA is the first step people should take. And um, if you get a client right now and um, he'd like to test his DNA, a female or a male client, um, would it vary? And what would you advise them? And would age be a matter? Um, so we have done, in terms of age, we've tested people from one day old to 91 days old. Your DNA never changes throughout your lifetime. And for the majority of the genes that we study, they tend to operate similarly for men and women. So when the gene has a variation, like if you can't digest lactose, same for men, same for women, it's going to be all the same. And so that data is there. There's a few um, trickier genes, you know, when you get into disease genes that can be more male, female oriented, but generally the gene does the same thing for all people. And there's great knowledge in having that. And again, our focus is really on the preventative health genes, the things, not the disease genes. Once you're sick, we're, you know, that's a different set of rules. We're trying to keep you healthy. And I know that you worked with lots of people and clients from all sort of um, the world. Um, can you tell us that, a, a little bit more about it? Yeah, well, I mean, we work with all kinds of people. So the people that come to us are those who are saying, I want to know the most I can about my body to be my healthiest. So that's one group of people, you know, especially in the fitness field, which you're in, people, you know, are saying, I want to get the edge. I want to know how I can perform my best if they're, especially if they're competing. Um, it's what is that extra bit that I can do that really will help my body perform at my best. So that was actually some of the origins of our company. We worked with a lot of professional athletes and bodybuilders to make sure that they were really fine tuning how they reacted. And, and a lot of bodybuilders, because if you can eat really according to your DNA, you are healthier right through to your competitions. And, and it just makes a, a, a huge difference. So that was a real starting area. It was working with a lot of athletes. As it's progressed, and then we ended up with a lot of biohackers. So people who said, I want data to make health-based, you know, evidence-based decisions. And DNA is really the foundational piece, as I said, that you should have. Like that's key because that now directs you into areas that you should focus on. But I will say now the largest group that's starting to come to us are people who are having health problems mm. that the main health system can't solve. And that's because it's it's around lifestyle. And what we're doing is showing you where the genes are weak and where specific lifestyle changes can make a difference. And so I would say now a lot of our clients are because they just, something's wrong and they can't find it and they're not sure what it is. And this is just a great way to help you uh, target and find an area that can be, might lead you in the direction to solve it. Right. I'm going to speak a little bit in Arabic to tell the, um, I want to tell the audience. I've got a guest here. I've got my cousin, Saud, right? He's a trainer, right? You can jump in, right? And I've got an editor behind the, behind the camera, uh, Ahmed. Ahmed, you can, you understand English, don't you? Yeah. You can understand English. Yeah. So, so, so you could come on camera a little bit here so you can, so you can see. They can see you. Actually, I have a couple of questions for the I mean, I mean, yeah, you can ask a question. Um, my cousin wants to ask you some questions here. If, if Absolutely delighted, Zeus. 
uh, actually, by coincidence, I was going to do the genetic methylene test. And Z, believe it or not, called me yesterday and he told me, like, he have an interview with you, doctor, talking about the, the DNA test. So I ask I look at the camera. Yes, I ask him, is it about the genetic methylene test? And he said yes. The thing is, I tried to look about this test all around Kuwait. I couldn't find it. So before three months I was in Halifax, as I told you before. Yeah. And I looked about the genetic test, the genetic methylene test. And they said, I don't know, just correct me or no. They said that you have to do once a lifetime. It's only once. That's right. right. Yeah. So we, the now test... the reason is so just to be clear, when you're talking about methylation, it changes in your body all of the time. However, when you're doing DNA testing, you will only ever do it once because your DNA never changes. The way your genes are structured never changes. So we we recognize that methylation is super important into understanding how your body works. It's, you know, it, it affects all of your cells, how your how they function, your how your DNA synthesizes. It's right. a really core underlying piece. Right. I have a methylation problem, which is why I got into this. It turns out the DNA testing found that for me so we test a number of areas related to that and the great thing about this you do it once perfect perfect we're gonna get the episode lit here right now and um we're gonna speak about body genetics which are the, you've got the ectomorph that's um the the type of body that he can eat whatever he wants but can't gain as much weight as he can and we can speak about the mesomorph which is a very, very, very lucky um, type of genetics. He can play it two way rounds. He can gain weight, and he, he can he lose weight. He can he can do both at the same time, which is pretty um, amazing. Endomorph has a problem losing weight. That's, doesn't have a problem gaining weight. That's me. Um, what would you tell us about those three types of genetics, Doctor Lewis? Well, what I can do is I can generally tell in here in the testing, uh, we have a whole one that's just called, it's actually around body mass index. And there's a group of genes that are related to how people's bodies manage uh, weight just in general, because there's a huge amount of testing around that. So when I see that result, I know instantly if someone's, I will, whether if they don't, if someone in their family might have a weight problem. So that's just overall, you know, about body size. In here, I can see if, um, like what we're looking at is the genes related to carbs, fats, and proteins, and how a body manages those. You know, so some people will say, oh, I'm going on the keto diet and it works wonders for me. A keto diet works really well for up to six months. There's amazing DNA studies that show over two years, you will always lose more weight and be your healthiest, healthier results on a DNA diet, not a keto. We've seen people who have almost killed themselves on keto because it was wrong. They didn't have the fat genes and they were basically creating fatty liver disease for themselves. So some of this relates to some of the different body types you mentioned. But what we're look, what I'm looking at is how is your body set up for carbs, fats, proteins? For bodybuilders, I can see if you need more protein or if protein will put weight on for you. And then I'm looking at things like what about um, what about your insulin levels? And then also lactose, gluten, salt, sugar, cardiovascular, vitamins, and which vitamins your body needs that will have the biggest impact. So those are the parts that we're trying to go in and say, how can we figure out exactly what you need? Because your body has inherited this set of genes. Wow. And that's the area then that you're more likely to have issues. And so that can actually play out in all three of those body types, but we'll tend to see different issues in in certain types more often all right doctor um i want to take it step by step i'll tell you something kuwait middle east the public awareness over here is humongous it's becoming huge yeah, exactly. and, and 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 you know what doctor they have a big problem understanding their body type so you know what they do um some don't even do their blood tests and some do and some are too confused to understand their body types, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll take it step by step and we'll say, if I have a client that comes up to me right now 
and asks for um let's say let's let, let, let's take um a, a um I'll, I'll always take a female client because it's harder for her to lose weight her metabolism females are mostly harder to to lose weight in, uh, from a factor yeah. of metabolism um type if i get a female who is in her 30s mid 30s um five seven tall um 200 pounds let's say 200 pounds right do you agree 200 pounds yes right and she has a problem losing weight and she is doing everything correct. She's working out. She's on a diet, but she's too confused. She's not losing weight. What type of test would you advice to have? Well, I'm test her DNA? there's it's you we you you always do the full test like here like when we get our results and I don't you can see it it's red and green where it's red those are the places you've got problems here. There's quite a lot of problems that somebody needs to do with. They're actually, their macronutrients aren't the problem. It is the food sensitivities are the problem. So this person here, if I looked at their results, they've got to cut. So many diets want you to cut everything out. I'll tell you what you do have to, to shift. This one, dairy, it, it's all red. You got to cut that out. There's some gluten issues. The odds are this person has got to pull some gluten out. But most diets, you pull everything out and, and you're, you know, you're, you're eating, you know, lettuce and, and, and rice or something. And this one, and, uh, but that's, that's not the case here. We're going to be really far more specific about which things is your body not set up for genetically. And you need to work with your body versus against it. So if this person here was doing lactose and dairy, and this is a woman, she's going to have hormonal swings. It's going to put her body out of balance. It's going to create inflammation because then we test inflammation genes. And if you have inflammatory markers, your body's going to puff up. And, and be hanging on to things and it's gonna to struggle to lose weight. So as soon as we see that, we can now prescribe far more specifically, what are the steps you can take to lose weight because you're now working with your body versus against it. So it's, uh, it, it, you know, I'm for both men or women equally, we've just give you that we give you the right direction to go in because we can find what the, the trigger points, more easily the trigger points. This, this test this test is solving a lot of problems it does do you know why tell me i have like couple, i have i have like a couple of clients they just load with supplements load with vitamins but they don't know what actually is working what then they don't know what actually is not working same as the diet like what the doctor said so uh with this test actually if you do if you do this test the way i see it you're gonna save yourself money wise health wise time. and it's time lots of, lots, a lot lots of, time. of time and 100%. Time is priceless Here's... time is the priceless so buy time and make sure you get your dna fitness test and um dr lewis yeah I can ask you a question now would you still advise to have a blood test done along with the fitness dna test so uh, the answer is always, it depends what your health goals are. So a blood test is a point in time. It's going to tell you about where your body is sitting today. I'm giving you your lifetime roadmap. I'm basically your lifetime roadmap about where your body, how it's structured and where it's, it wants to head. And we haven't really even gotten into epigenetics yet, because the great thing is no matter what your DNA is, you want to work with it and around it. And once you know it, you can be now working with your body versus against it. And so the great thing about DNA is it's influenced. I'm going to get it's a longer answer here, but it's influenced by diet. The expression of your genes are influenced by diet, exercise, sleep, stress, vitamins, uh, how you even your mental health impacts the expression of your genes. So even if you've got weak genes, if you are working well around it, it will, it will work to keep you healthy. But if you are ignoring some gene that is not well set up for you, you're going to be heading down a chronic disease path like or, or a poor health path. And so really having that information is makes just a, a massive difference. It is, it is. And um, would the test tell me whether if I am using something that isn't meant for me, let's say, for example, I'm using a supplement Let's say curatin monohydro, for example. Mm -hmm. um, 
if I'm using creatine monohydrate, will, will the fitness DNA test tell me whether this fit, this creatine suits me or not, or certain amino acids would be good for me or not, or let's say a certain a, a certain yeah. workout. Mm -hmm. Some of that is more uh, when again we're working at the genetics and a lot of the food areas and the vitamins. Some of it it can tell, and some of it you you can read into it. Other places, then, especially if a person is trying to get really strong results, you might want to do a blood test, especially if you've got good panels available to you that can tell you where your where are the levels in your body, is there any deficiencies, etc. So that has absolutely a place. For, for me, if a person's got issues, to me, the order you do it is you do your DNA first because that gives you, it helps you see if there's a ballpark issue. If you already know, you, you've got even something as simple as a vitamin D issue. Maybe you start there. Whether Kirsten or the amino acids will help, that's a little bit different now. So your some of your profiles might be able to give you a bit more information in those areas, especially if you're trying to refine a workout routine or your results or you're competing or something like that. Uh, okay, I've got two two sectors right now. Two sectors. I've got a sector that is that has a problem issue, has mm -hmm. nothing to do with fitness, lifestyle wise. I like this sector. Right, you like the sector. And I have a question for right? the sector. Actually. So, so, and then we're gonna jump back into the fitness um industry. So, um, I'll have I'll have, I'll have my cousin Saud first yeah, ask a I, question I, for the for the health wise. Actually, I'm nowadays I'm too much in the health wise. Uh, let's talk about if I have an, uh, if I have my family have a uh, medical history, they have a medical history. Does the gene, the DNA test can tell me what issue does I have with the, the family history, medical problem? Like for example, if somebody have blood pressure, it's going to be on a generation, like from my grandfather, my father, then to me, then to my son. Does the gen the DNA test can solve this problem? Check what things that haven't with me, like as a, a differentiate, can solve it. I mean, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So the answer is we can tell if you inherited. I'll tell you which issues we can ch test for, and we can tell if you inherited it or not. Remembering that you inherit your 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 mother has you know the two of the alleles, your father has two alleles, and you get one from each. Did you get that combo or this combo or that combo? So it can vary. So maybe not all of the, the men in the family end up with the issues. It might only be certain ones or certain ones of the kids. So it does vary. And that's, we see that in families where some inherited the blood pressure, the cardiovascular, the, 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 the dementia, other things like that. So we test for blood pressure, we test for cardiovascular, we look at the stroke genes, we look at um, uh, uh, the, um, they're, they're called APOE, it's, uh, it's for Alzheimer's, but it also links to cardiovascular uh, oh, wow. because it's about placking. And so if your body's placking, then we know immediately you need to be on a healthier diet because your body is going to react to too much heavy fats and, you know, fried foods and junk and what have you. That's so Dr. we can see that. That's doctor. The main reason was, was I was, I'm looking for the genetic methylene yeah. test to check yeah. if this family history affected me or not. Yeah. So we can tell you on all of those genes. Yes. The one thing I just want to be clear on is we don't test for rare genes because rare genes are rare. We're testing for the common genes related to day-to-day -day health and that keep you away from some of these common diseases like, you know, acquired diabetes or weight gain and cardiovascular and, uh, you know, losing memory and, and, and poor health in general. So the answer is if it's, that's what you're looking for, we would we would be giving you a lot of insight into it. And knowing that even if you have some rare genes that we don't test for, um, be, because if you get that, people often don't know what to do. This test is telling you what you should be doing. Because if you can keep your other genes and your body healthy, then you don't trigger and express the more disease-based genes. And so the whole thing is, when we're healthier every day as a human being, we just 
you don't get as sick. And that's because your body is doing what it needs to be doing. So you don't tend to trigger the others. So that's why it's just so important to find the keys to get your day-to-day health working right. And we also like, that's all the diet genes, because those really are so important. We also look at exercise genes, like, you know, how do you find, uh, we look at blood pressure in there, um, you, you know, what your VO2 max genes are set up. And, and we can tell if somebody is more inclined to be a, a power athlete or a endurance athlete, like those are all things about how your body's set up. Perfect, perfect. Dr. Yeah. Lewis, there's a um, question that I, I really don't like to ask it. Right, but like, um, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask it, and I really wish the audience, the viewers, would never, ever, ever go through that cancer tumor. With the DNA test, test your tumors or your cancer of your genetics of your parents. Yes. So we don't, so cancer gene, It's there are some genes. So we test two genes related to uh, TNFA, tumor necrosis factor alpha. And if you have more variations in those genes, it just means your cancer fighting isn't naturally as strong. It does not mean you're getting cancer. Any of the gene tests that we do do not mean you're getting that. It means though that you have genes that aren't as well set up to deal with things. So if we see that, we know you've got to work on keeping your body healthier. So your body is unhealthy due to toxicity and deficiency. So you have too much or too little of things that your body should or shouldn't have. So deficiency happens right now for often in vitamins and food because our food supply is so weak. Like it's, we, 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 the food that we grow now, if it's not organic, locally grown in natural soils, doesn't have the same quality. It's got like half of what it used to 50 years ago. So you, you could eat a perfect diet and still be a little bit nutrient deficient. And so that's why we often need to supplement more now because our food just doesn't have what it used to. The other problem is toxicity. We live in an environment filled with, I mean, our, our everything off gases. You've got clothes, you know, furniture, carpets, um, uh, chemicals, uh, you know, herbicides put on food. So our body is fighting way more foreign uh, micro elements than it's ever had to before that is your bigger cause of cancer and your body even though all of us are exposed to it some of us have better cancer fighting so you don't inherit cancer genes what you inherit is stronger and weaker ability to deal with your environment and then there are some genes that fight cancer it doesn't mean you're going to get cancer it just means if you've got weaker genes there you need to live a little bit healthier because you don't have as much natural genetic fighting power there. You know, I ask you this, Dr. Uh, Lewis, because it's a major, major issue um, that the world's facing here. And um, most athletes, um, they want to use human growth hormone. I'm sure I'm sure you heard about it. And they would go in and do a blood test regarding to test um, if, if they've got any tumors or any um, uh, cancer involved cause if they would to start a cycle or to go under a therapy of a human growth hormone, what will happen is the tumor would grow with it or the cancer would grow with it. So speaking about DNA, now they can go deeper inside to check whether their their, their family history has it or not. So it could go way well, back to their background, doesn't it? Yeah, they don't have to worry about their family history. We're going to give you your specific code. You don't even need to know your family history. The okay. only thing is, you'll ha- if we have you've got the code, you will know yes or no whether it's something you need to focus on. And the great thing is, sometimes you've got the code, but you're healthy. But if you see it in your family, you, that's your evidence that you're that there's a risk factor that you do need to be careful with. The reality is, we can we can stay healthy no matter our genetics. But if you've got certain genetics, you're, it'll create a far higher likelihood. It's called a predisposition for some issue to occur. And um, Dr. Lewis, uh, in regards to um, depression and mindset, how can this DNA fitness test help a client? So when your body is in balance, you will have less depression. 
if you can make getting the nutrients you need, you can improve on depression. So having a healthy body is heavily linked and exercising and working keeps your, your body chemistry in a place that lowers depression. So that would be the first uh, part. There are people who have got genes related to depression. We test for a couple of key ones. And if that's the case, then again, a person needs to make sure they're exercising more because we know that creates the endorphins and the things that keeps you healthy. And you need to watch sugars that has a, you know, a negative impact. There's just a lot of things you can do in your diet to help to avoid that. So that's kind of on that part. Mm. The other part that we do know is that your thinking affects the expression of your genes. And actually one of my scientists that I love and, and you know, he's a, an international bestseller is Joe Dispenza. And he writes, uh, he's got the books like You Are the Placebo, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself um, and Evolve. And those ones show you how what you think can actually change the expression of your genes. So people have actually been able to, through deep meditative, positive vibrational thought, been able to shift the expression of some weird genes in their body and to heal their bodies. So the power of the mind is still, I think we are still really learning to tap into that in a way. We know yeah. people who are positive live 10 years longer. I was listening to a study yesterday, people with dogs live 10 years longer because it just gives them more happy hormones. And so like there's, so positivity does affect your genes. You do live longer. It expresses them more positively. And so that's important, but sometimes it's your your environmental toxins and pressures and chemistry can create this depression. And when you're in a depression, it's very, very difficult to pull out. I'm, I'm a big advocate that exercise really supports that and a cleaner diet linked to your DNA. So eat according to your DNA and you will improve on all measures. So, so overthinking, we all know it's overthinking kill you, but now overthinking heal you actually. See that? Well, I yeah. just learned like overthinking. Now thinking is if you think positive, it's actually going to heal you. It's amazing. Uh, it, the, we are learning. There is so much amazing research about that right now. And and it's and it's. The, I'm going to add one more piece because I'm studying quantum physics also. Mm -hmm. And in that quantum realm, it's not just uh, thinking positively. You have to bring an energetic feeling around it. And right. it's a vibrational piece because everything is vibration and frequency. So you got to raise your frequency um, in order for that to occur. So having a higher body frequency, um, really does change your life. Dr. Lewis, did you get into the meditation and the chakras and how to unblock the chakras? Yeah, I'm so into all of it now. Amazing. But the weird thing is I came at yeah. it all through science. So oh. I came at this through science going, okay, I've got my DNA. Yay. We've got the answer. Then I discovered that DNA is fully impacted by your epigenetics diet, sleep, exercise, stress, toxins. And then I discovered the whole layer around energy and vibration and, you know, uh, positive thought. And so I just keep researching all these levels. So, so absolutely, meditation is fantastic. It lowers your blood pressure. It clears you, detoxifies, de-stresses you, supports the body so that your body can be in equity equilibrium we have so much going on in our world and so honestly if you can take 10 minutes in the morning in the evening to do a little meditation yeah. it can be walking it can just be meditative activity some people do that in the gym or through running but that peaceful time where you allow your body and the cortisol to shift out you know to just kind of settle and take that fight or flight and settle it you will be healthier and your genes will express more positively yeah, i do that every morning and night dr lewis don't don't be surprised uh, meditation is part of my lifetime and it really really did um do wonders but um it's it goes deeper than that and it's a different it's a whole new page and we can speak about the meditation all day and we couldn't finish i want to take you Back again to the fitness DNA power test, Dr. Lewis. And I want to talk about childhood obesity. Which about what? Childhood obesity. Oh, yeah. You so, know, major issue with, with parents. I had I had major, I had lots of parents that would come come down to me and say, Um, we've got we've got we've got our kids, right? They are in they're like 10 and 13. 
and they're getting bullied at school or um they're getting laughed at and you know calling them fat and making fun of them and those parents are dealing with such a big problem having to put their kids on a diet especially when we got lots of advertisements outside there and you know you get a toy or on a fast food or then then again they try to put them on a clean food but but they couldn't understand their body type would this yeah would this, this dna test solve this problem this is the uh, this is the biggest clue and answer to helping solve that problem that you'll have because it's so hard how do you keep a kid you know i mean we all know sugar is going to be a problem right and kids love that but what you can do is you, this will give you the answer on whether there's problems with lactose or gluten or carbs or sugars or other things and it will show you where the child's body is more likely to have problems mm -hmm. and and so doing this at a young age for your children is the biggest gift you can give them and so I did this for my kids because my kids were adopted. So that's why I actually, I didn't think, it, I never occurred to me it was going to solve my health problems. Right. I did this for my twins because they're adopted and I had no idea. And so, you know, the, uh, you know, the, actually the person who got me into this is, uh, I have a cousin who's a three-time Canadian bodybuilding champion. And right. she, she found this company, which I then acquired because I just couldn't believe what it could do. It can, it can change some people's lives. It's not always a silver bullet, but it's just phenomenal. And so this information gave me critical insight to my kids who I know, you know, in, in Canada, you're trained, every kid should drink like, you know, three cups of milk a day. Well, my kids don't have those genes. That creates inflammation. That creates weight gain for them. And so, you know, my kids now know they all have, they all do lactose and alternatives. They feel better. They, they can see it and feel it in their bodies. Um, they have the, the APOE gene. It's actually, it's interesting. Uh, Chris Hemsworth just did his DNA for this APOE gene and discovered he's got a gene linked to Alzheimer's. It's basically, it's not Alzheimer's, it's placking in the brain and the body that can lead to that. So he's changed his whole lifestyle um, so that that never affects him. My kids have the same. And so they know that if they are eating fried foods, uh, junk foods, that that is going to create an impact in their body that will, will plaque. And so as a result, they know there's certain things they need to do. I'm going to add one more point about my kids that I know that if they get a concussion, it doesn't heal as well because the placking goes and settles. Right. So I've I've now looked into, because they both have had a concussion, I pulled them out of contact sports. Uh, they, you know, they, they made the choice as well, but, um, we, we pulled them out of anything that could have gave them a higher risk of a brain injury because we know that it doesn't heal as well. And then I've searched a lot of protocols on how do you get the brain, um, firing and wiring again after you've suffered uh, a concussion. So for athletes, frankly, if I'm a parent, I would also want to know before putting my kids in certain sports, do they have, are they do they have a risk of that concussive gene? If they do, you need to find some different sports for them, like put them in swimming, like you do not put them in, you know, in, in football where you're going to be cracking your head. Um, you're, you're setting them up for dementia, which we've seen many pro athletes have a problem with over time where, you know, they, you know, especially boxers later on in life. Um, so again, you can just learn such valuable things and childhood obesity is what you asked. Absolutely, you're going to get critical insights. I found some people's kids who I discovered were going to be celiac mm. because they had a critical some critical genes. So, oh my God, stop feeding them, you know, McDonald's burgers because the breads in there alone are going to become a problem. Turns out meat wasn't the problem. It was the, you know, it was the bread was going to be the problem for this kid. So lots that you can learn. And um I want to ask another, you know what? These questions I've got. I've got loads I, and lots. Have, you have a question? Yes, yes, you can yes. see sure. I have a question. Right there. Yes. Uh, doctor, my wife actually is a special need teacher. <laughs> and she, like, since, uh, like, 10 or probably 12 years, I've been, like, connecting uh, a lot of those uh, special needs kids. I really actually love them. They're really smart. Does this test can help parents check if, the, they probably have uh, special need kids or uh, 
something like that? We don't test to see if there's autism or spectrum or other issues. So that is not what we test for. But we work a lot with autistic groups. I have a, some, I have many friends with autistic and uh, kids who are on the spectrum. Um, and the great thing is, it's very difficult because their sensory um, situation to do much with them. But because the test is so simple, you just have to get, the, you know, a little bit of a cheek swab from them with that you can find out how to keep their diet more balanced because they get quite focused on certain foods uh, and can get obsessive about that. And so what you'll know is how do you keep them steered in the right direction for things that where the foods aren't setting their body off and, and creating some of the problems sometimes, for them. Sometimes if you give them like more sugar, they get more hype. If you give them uh, uh, like probably let's say junk food does yeah. affect them too much. They, they probably cannot sleep. That's that's what I experienced. Exactly. They are, their bodies are more sensitive to sugar than the average person because their chemistry and certain things are just wired very differently. And so sugar is very tricky. And in this society that just has so much of that, if, you know, if a parent could keep their autistic child off of almost all sugary food, their challenge, their, they wouldn't, they'd see them more settled, just a little bit calmer. Um, and then if you can then gear the diet a little bit more towards their DNA, that will help settle as well. It so can make quite a big difference. So basically you, you advise parents with, who have uh, special needs kids to do this test, right? Absolutely. If you can find any little thing to improve the situation, because it is so challenging being the parent of, it's hard being a parent in the first place, let alone a parent with a special needs or, or an autistic child. And so to the degree, because they can't often express themselves and you can see you, you were having to watch their behavior so closely, anytime you can find some answers out that don't take huge trial and error, is going to help. And that's the same thing for any of your kids with childhood obesity, with um, keeping them from being depressed, keeping them from being hyperactive, keeping them from, uh, you know, having uh, uh, special needs challenges or issues. So, you know, we're just trying to find a few keys. Like we test over two, you know, 250 genes in 70 areas, but it doesn't mean that everything's wrong. It actually means a whole pile is right. In general, there's <clears throat> around 10% um, of the test that says these are where you've got the critical variations. So it's a bit of a relief that you only have to change these five or 10, you know, maybe five critical things. Um, and that I can do that to improve my trajectory. I will say though, it's not a silver bullet. It turned out it turned to be the one thing that I needed to give me the insight from my health. But I, in general, have great genes. But I had zero vitamin Bs functioning in my body. So mine was simple. I see some people who it's simple. When it's, we've got complex disease or issues or children or cases, it takes a little bit more. But at least this gives you data and something to work with and a positive action that is that that you can make some positive progress and every bit helps Perfect. amazing we should have this test asap for everybody for everybody every this should be the first test anybody does with their doctor or with the health system to know this because once you have that information you go oh okay these are the five things i need to be careful of for my entire lifetime and uh, you can get away with it for a while like my kids experiment with lactose all the time and then but now they have the evidence to show it's lactose they didn't have to figure out is it one of these hundred things they know that's it and they're it, it, and, it, and they're not you know they're not allergic and you know reacting and breaking out in hives but if they kept it up the odds are they could end up in that situation it's just how much your body can tolerate it for how long i'm going to add another piece of data. And so one is when people get ill and having gut problems and weight problems, I can help identify, is it the genetics that are the problem or sometimes people have created a gut issue. Wow. So the other thing I can tell is this actually genetic or do you need to heal your gut? And many people do. So if you've been through lots of, you know, if you've been through lots of antibiotics, if you've been through, if you have lots of artificial sweeteners, uh, and, you know, a little bit too much junk, you damage your gut and it can become porous 
And then your body starts to react and inflame and um, almost treat everything like allergies because it's food's getting where it shouldn't be. And so if I can see, is it a genetic issue or do you maybe need to do some work healing your gut, which would be more of a, of a different, you know, different things that you would do. But now you're kind of figuring out where's the problem coming from. And that's, you know, that's important. And um, Dr. Lewis, do you think being an addict is genetically or is it um, anybody could be an addict to a certain drugs, let's say um, the, the, the street drugs or the medical drugs? Um, could, it, could it be genetically or could it be anyone could fall into this, um, let's say, black hole, I'll call it. What do you think of black so hole? It is. There are genes that lead that can contribute to more addictive behavior. So, for example, we actually check for we test for a, a gene VDNF that is if and we use it, we keep it kind of safe in the smoking area. And if you're and it's very well proven, if you have this gene, you are more likely to, to smoke two to three or four times more. So like messages don't smoke because you're once you start it, it is a gene that causes you to smoke you know, you tend to smoke more. Now that's not just smoking, that is the way the brain is structured and functions. We also test for some compulsive tendency. So that will tend to, it could be compulsive on anything, but it can affect with drugs. The problem with drugs is anybody can become an addict. And we've, we've seen that, but you know, you know that anybody, you know, if they're taking an Oxycontin or a painkiller, painkillers are often for uh, people in their middle age, the, the route into addiction, because right. it's just, it, 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 they're so addictive. There's just some, they're so damaging. Of course, if you've got younger people who start experimenting with street drugs, it just, it changes the brain. And once the brain has gotten that change and that rewiring, it just becomes very difficult chemically to, to shift and change it and fix some of the damage that's done. You know, so a person has to be very careful with, you know, street type drugs. Interestingly though, plant-based medicines are not the same. They work differently with your body. So if you're looking at cannabis and THC and things, they have a different impact in the body because there's they're cannabinoids and we have a cannabinoid system. It works more symbiotically with that. Um, and of course, these things are ruled differently in different countries, but there is more openness around CBD and other things like that. They are more natural for our bodies or even plant medicines. There's wonderful treatments being coming out right now for addictions using certain plant medicines to help shift the body to be able to get past some of that so uh, and and PTSD and trauma and depression so there's uh, I'm, I you know I read a lot of research and that stuff has is very promising right um Dr. Lewis tell me a story with a client that came to you and did the test and um how did you work with that client because after that i'm gonna jump in and do my test which i got right here as you guys can see right but before that i'd like to hear a story sure i got nothing but stories so like there's <laughs> like you know so you know I'm, i'll start with simple ones you know i've got somebody who eh, you know his you know wife kind of said you should try doing this test a long distance runner ran all the time, but was upset because his knees were hurting. So he'd been going to physio for two years for his knees. And they were, because he just couldn't understand why his knees were hurting so much. Did the test, turns out he's got a lactose problem, pulled lactose, two weeks later, all the inflammation was gone, never had to go back to physio. Wow. Oh wow! Right, like that was just like, oh, but had always had it, didn't react. People think they're not allergic to it, but they don't realize creating inflammation in their body if they can't break it down properly. So that would be one. Um, I've been dealing more with people who have just, you know, been recovering from cancers and are very worried about it coming back. And so, you know, so one of uh, a woman who had, who's just recovering from breast cancer was feeling depressed, really struggling, used the information to shift her diet. Um, and that made a big difference. We had some intra a, a beautiful case set of cases early on with one, two women, both overweight, and one grew up in the fats are bad, you know, no fat, uh, you know, can't eat that. And the other one who was into uh, you know, can't, uh, uh, you know, didn't want carbs, didn't believe carbs were the right thing. Mm -hmm. When we found, looked at their genes, they were exactly opposite. And oh, the wow. person who wasn't eating carbs should be doing carbs um, and lower fats. And the other one should have been doing lower fats, higher carbs. Like it was just, 
So, or, or should have been doing some of the fats, whatever way that was should have been said. But, and they both ended up losing multiple dress sizes, losing the weight just by tailoring their diet uh, closer to their body. The people we've, we with Chris Hemsworth coming out recently on his, we're getting a lot more people doing APOE testing to see if they've got this, these, this placking gene. And then you move on to a, a you, you know, a much cleaner diet. You want to pull out uh, fried foods, et cetera. I'll see, um, I'll get, uh, people who've got cardiovascular in their family. And if we identify that, we can see where the issues are, but they'll want their whole family done because sometimes the kids don't have it and it's not a problem for them. And so it's great to to learn that as well. So there's just a, a few examples. What about, what about pregnant woman? He, uh, he about, asking about pregnant woman. Yes. What, what about, about them? Like if they do the DNA test. You can do, so it doesn't matter if you're pregnant. It doesn't matter if you're on, you know, growth hormones, anything. You can do the DNA test anytime because your DNA never changes. Okay. So your DNA is the same. So it doesn't matter when you do it. But I'll tell you something that's interesting, Zeus, is I turns out my critical genetic weakness is this methylation process and vitamin Bs. But it's not vitamin B12. It's vitamin B9, which is folate. So it turns out I need like four times the amount of the average person for folate to stay healthy for all my bees to produce iron, to produce oxygen. I wasn't able to ever get pregnant. Oh my God. Right? right. Had I known, I've worked with women who've mm -hmm. come in with hormonal issues and I can tell them if they shouldn't be on certain like birth control pills because it can affect, if they have certain genes, their hormone, hormones will overreact and it will take them a long, 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 long time to clear their bodies in order to ever be able to get pregnant. But mm -hmm. I can also see if you need a lot more vitamin Bs than what they, the, they normally prescribe. Like, mm -hmm. so for me, I take way above the recommended daily allowance, the RDA for folate. I actually now know for, I believe from my DNA test, how I probably could have gotten pregnant. And so, so we'll deal with infertility, but then you also, if you're a pregnant woman, want to be sure you're on the best diet you possibly can for the health of your baby. And um, regarding female who have got problems with their intermetrosis and um, they can't get pregnant, just like you mentioned, um, Dr. Lewis, will that DNA fitness, uh, the DNA power test, will that be any help for them? So we give you insight. So we won't say, yes, you're going to have endometriosis. No, you aren't. You're going to have troubles getting pregnant. It doesn't quite work like that. What we can see is you have genes around hormones that struggle in the, let's say, the elimination area, which means they may build up in your body. So what we're looking at is more subtle factors than that, but there will always be some insight. So whenever we do the reviews with people and when we train people, because we're making sure you know your DNA, we're going to A, do your DNA testing, Abdul Aziz, oh, yeah. and then we're going to make sure you know how to interpret this. And and it's it's actually pretty simple because it's in green and red and we give you recommendations. So it's 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 there. But it's looking for the subtle things when someone's got, okay, I'm you know a woman and I'm having hormonal issues. Where might that, where might there be triggers that can be affecting that? Because it ain't just one switch. There's multiple little things. Most of our diseases are complex. They're not super simple. And so if someone, a woman has hormonal issues, it's not just I have bad uh, hormone genes. It is some things are triggering it in a poor direction. Let's see if we can remove or add certain things to make your body be more in equilibrium, more in a homeostasis, more in balance, because we're built to be in balance. But if you keep introducing things that are going to put you out of balance, you're, you're going to, stuff's going to pop up in different ways. So, and it's where your body is weak, where your genetics are weak is where, when you're, when you're out of balance is where things show up. It's not because you have a problem with hormones or a problem with weight or a problem with ever. It's because something has triggered that to occur. And that's what we're trying to do is sleuth all of this back to find what are some of the triggers, the levers we can pull that will help you to be healthier. So so basically this, this test is like really healthy for long, longevity. Yeah, it's going to help a lot. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. This it's, gonna help a lot. it's like going to protect you from have, uh, having a... Uh, a medical problem in the future. Uh, it reduces your risk in all of those things, Zeus. And again, I don't want to say this is a silver bullet, but what it is, is it's this, it is more information than you can get from any other source about your unique body. Blood tests only test so much. 
point in time, stool, so much point in time, uh, urine, so much point in time. This gives you, boof, a whole pile of data about yourself, stuff that you're going to already have known intuitively, but it will clarify a few points. And now you're trying to change your health, your health trajectory from this to this. It doesn't, you know, mm. make you healthy. It just helps you know how to be a little bit healthier. And, uh, and, and I do want to add a couple more pieces of information. One is we focus on privacy. So we never buy or sell your data. Everything's double encrypted. Your sample is destroyed. We only collect what you need. So there ain't, so there's nothing will ever happen. You know, we're about the safest place you can go to get your DNA tested where it's, you can just know that all you've got is your data and even if somebody stole your data, they can't do anything with it because we're only collecting all of these certain genes uh, related to day-to-day -day health. So it's super safe um, is one thing. The other thing, it's so easy to do. You just, we're going to see you do this now. You just do a simple little cheek swab, which makes it really, really easy. You can do it anywhere in the world. Um, you know, we, we can get you kits wherever you need them. And then we process it and your results are all online. And then you're going to have people like Abdul Aziz or other people, you know, that we work with, whoever you choose. And I'm hoping you're going to do this because this is something that is critical for you to be able to help the people that you work with, both fit, fitness wise and health wise. And with the different body types, you're now going to have more insight than you've ever had before into the three types of body types and how to work with that body type to keep it the healthiest. And so the body you know, you're going to have those tests and be, be, make them available for people. The body type she meant is um, the genetics of the ectomorph, mesomorph, and yeah. endomorph. Are Correct. Able to know exactly yes. who what I'm working diet. with. Yes. You know? Yeah. And um, your diet, your supplement you should take. Genetic, I know. Genetic, I know. So, ectomorph, mesomorph, endomorph, mafia. I know. I know. Speaking about privacy, Dr. Lewis, I am going to share my privacy with everybody here. <laughs> right so everyone could know my genetics um and I'm, I'm i'm injured by the way i've got i've got an injury here i've got a a a a, a um what do you call it a a sling Pass. yeah a, a sling um i tore a triceps tendon elbow tear but mm -hmm. um yeah i'm doing this test so i've got this kit here from you lot it says um example for how to package the kits right i'm gonna remove that so it came out just like that, right? I'm going to show the viewers. I've got the, I guess it's the, the swipe, right? That's the swap. Yep. So it comes with a swap. And um, it comes with, I guess it's how to get your results, right? Mm -hmm. So the viewers can see that, get started. And welcome to DNA Power, right? And also comes with a um, just how to ship it back and how to ship it back. I want to show the, the the viewers of how it really comes here, right? And a bag, so you can just put it in. And um, Doctor Lewis, I guess we're gonna get started and guide me through it, Doctor Lewis. Tell you me. bet. So. You know, um, what you're going to be doing, we're going to do this after, you can do this after, because what you want to do is you log on to the portal and you have to put in your unique code because we only track everything according to the numbers that are here. We right. don't care if you want to call yourself Mickey Mouse or, you know, uh, or, or the Hulk. We don't, it doesn't matter what you want to name yourself. You just have to create a, a, a login. You put in this unique number and that's what we work with. Um, your report will put your name on it, but that only goes to you. So that's just so that, and so you have to register that number because all you do is send this swab back. So that's the critical, that's the first step generally we want you to do is register your swab. Then what you're going to do is take it and rub the inside of both cheeks 10 times, both sides. So rip that open. All right, I'm, I'm going to rip that open right now, right? Yeah. There's instructions here and on the piece of paper. Right. Yeah. It does say that on the piece of paper. So I'm gonna rip that open. Good bismillah. And so I, I I got it right here. Yep. And the customer can see the numbers, uh, the serial number. And um, what should I just do with it? Go open your mouth, rub the inside of both of your cheeks ten times, both sides on this. Both sides, huh? 
Bismillah. Yeah, on the inside. Yeah. That's 10 times here. Does it matter if I if, if, if I swirl it or, or does it? Yeah, swirl it. You're just trying to make sure you pick up a few cells. And you were not supposed to eat or drink for 30 minutes. You've been pretty good. You had one drink of something, but it should be fine. We're trying to test your DNA, not your food. <laughs> so if you if you have eaten or drink, sometimes it can affect the results and we have to re-swab you. For any reason it doesn't work, we just do it again. And then what we're going to do is twist. You're good now. Fabulous. Okay. Twist the blue part here. So twist that uh, hard. All right. It's stiff, right? And, and then and then you're going to pop the swab into the blue liquid, which is a stabilizer. All right. Just and, like that. Yep. And seal it tight. And then you just sort of twist it. It doesn't really matter. Just sort of go back and forth. What you're trying to do is that just creates a stabilization solution. It basically means that it stays, the swabs last for years unused and it'll last for up to six months just to be sure we preserve your data. That's it, like you just go like that. It gets mixed up in what the mail say? anyway. Thank you're just you. gonna pop it. Yeah, put it in there just for international mail. They want the extra just so it doesn't leak. And then you're gonna be popping it into an envelope. Most countries you have to courier it back and into in, in an envelope. So you probably have to go to your post office or somewhere to get it couriered. Uh, you say it's worth $1, it's not worth anything. A used swab is worthless. Um, and just so that there's no duty anybody pays on it. And then you send that back to us and uh, it's either gonna go back to you, however you choose to do it, or it's gonna go back to the lab. And, um, uh, and we get you your results. It takes, depend once we receive it, it takes two to four weeks. So you're going to have to open that envelope again and put the number in your system. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I guess I'm going to have to open up the envelope. Yeah, I guess. Uh, all right. I, I'll, get, I'll get another envelope. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll log you on to the portal. There's all instructions to do that. Excited, Dr. Lewis. You can put I, it in any envelope you envelope. want. Yeah, yeah so I, I need to get that. <laughs> so don't, don't forget to get the serial number before putting it in the envelope. Remember that, yeah. right? <laughs> the, the good news is we have backups. We record what we've sent to people just right. because we right. do get some people that forget, but please don't. It makes it so much easier if you, oh my God. <laughs> if you follow the instructions. <laughs> the code. The, the, that's that's what you do best. Good things. That's what you do. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> So, if you'd send it back to us, I know which numbers are recorded that went to you. So it's fine. We would have figured it out, but it just takes a bit more tracking. So now we've got you set. We can't yes. wait to now get those results. Uh, you're going to get your results online. And next time we're going to share screen so that I can actually right. walk people through your specific results and the five or 10 things unique to you that are important to keep you your healthiest of your lifetime. We're also going to see if you have the genes for tendon and muscle injury. So okay. whether you are prone to that or not, or whether it just happened and how, you know, and, and your recovery. So that's part of the, the, the testing we do also. Wow. You know what, doctor, I really can't wait to get the results back. And now it's available here in the Middle East in Kuwait and everywhere. Um, and I'm so excited to know exactly what's happening with my DNA. Uh, my cousin Saud, do you have any questions? For, no, actually, I'm, for Dr. I'm Lewis? no, no, actually, I'm just jealous. I want to do the test as well. I will get you. We'll, we'll get. I get him one. He sent. Ex I, he's going to have extra tests because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's stalking them, so you'll be able yeah, to get I one. Would, I went there in Halifax to try to do it, but I, w I was running it on time. I couldn't do it. Why don't you've got extra tests? Why don't you get one for Zeus to do? Let's we can we'll review that. both of your results. A hundred percent. hundred percent. That'd be fun. And we'll, com we'll compare them between between one another. I'm 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 ready to share it live. Are you ready to share it live? Of course. Finish. That's it. That's what's up. It's fair. It's, it's fair for the people. Actually. There we go. There right. we go. It's fair for the people. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Well, that's going to be fun. DNA yeah. power. Um, on the house with shredded diesel. Doctor Lewis, all the way from Canada. Doctor, do you have any last words before we end up the episode and see you in episode number two? In four weeks, I'd say, or two weeks? 
about, about four or six weeks because we need to get it back and process it. So we'll make sure we've got enough time. So the, the message I leave with people is if you, there is too much going on in our world right now, and it is up to you to take power over your own health. And so we now need to be super proactive about your health. This is one of those tools, one of them that helps you to do that. Um, we want to be healthy, live a healthier, longer life, but we want it if we're living longer, live healthy. This is just a way to do that. And we're trying to help you really own your own health the best you can. So do you have any last words? Nothing but thank you, doctor. Thank you so much for the full information that you give us. It was gorgeous. It was absolutely beautiful. Excellent. I, I can't wait to go through the DNA with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> On the house with shredded diesel. Ya Rabbi, ya Shabab. Ladies and gentlemen, love you all and see you episode number two. Peace. Shout out to LA Muscle. Min Britani, London. Ya Ali, London. Wow, Instagram. Aqua, supplement. Ala wajh al premium grade. Pharmaceutical grade. Tabi adjust it. Tabi tenha. Tabi tneshif. Shafa ahem fiqa al ghali. Adda'am al rasmi haq. On the house with shredded diesel. Salat. Ayyub Allah, salat.